Hi everybody, Sean and Allison here from Spoken Garden. Hi you guys, happy Saturday to you. Hope your weekend is off to a great start. This is day 124 of the Quarantine Gardeners. Yep, and if you don't know, that's us, we're the Quarantine Gardeners, and this is our daily video log of us accomplishing projects around our garden while under quarantine. And thank you for watching today. We're really happy you're here. And if you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and hit that button down below so you don't miss out on all our daily videos. So guys, today's Saturday and it's Tool Saturday. So we wanted to talk to you today about stakes as a great tool in your garden. And you might think, wait, stakes are actually a supply, not really a tool. Have you guys lost your minds? But there are other ways to use stakes in your garden. So we're gonna show you a couple examples. Also, we wanted to show you how to properly stake your plants. So we'll show you some examples of that too. And joining us today are two black capped chickadees that are gonna eat while we talk. So don't mind them. They're hungry, they don't Literally mind. Literally an arm's length away from me. Yeah, so guys, here are our stakes and we have metal stakes and we have bamboo stakes. And so don't mind this bamboo stake being kind of curved. Um, it's just been well used and well loved here, out here in our garden. So it's a natural source for stakes. It's great to use. They'll sometimes blend in to your different landscapes depending on where you put them and with what plants. So that's pretty cool. And that's something to consider when choosing your stakes. We also have these metal stakes and these are five foot stakes. They come in different sizes though, two, three, four, five, and even six feet long. They're great because they're actually coated in green paint and so they blend in well with really green, dark green plants if you need to use them in that setting. So again, color, size, sometimes it just depends on what your needs are in your garden. And before I forget, there's also wood stakes and you can use those around your garden for all of the same reasons that you would use one of these. It just depends on how you wanna use them and what you wanna do. So guys, make sure when you're staking plants to use the properly sized stake. You wouldn't wanna use either of these stakes for say a tree that you just planted that is probably you know six or seven feet tall. The caliper size on the stem is maybe one and a half inches or more. These are not the stakes you'd wanna use. You'd wanna use an actual wood stake, maybe two inches in diameter and use straps instead of twine like what we're gonna show you today using the twine for one of our plants. So just make sure you understand that. The larger the plant, the larger the stake needs to be. You might have seen our video where we planted a camellia tree in our yard and we used actually one of these green stakes. For that size of tree at a very young age, like the one we planted is, this was appropriate for that tree. We'll be able to remove that stake after about a year or so of growth for that tree in that location because the roots will have gone out and radiated out and stabilized the tree enough to where it won't need this stake anymore. So something to think about, go ahead and check that video out if you want to see what I'm talking about. And we'll link it down below for you so you can just click on it and go to that video. You might recognize this area. We had a previous video where we did a time lapse and we explained what we were doing out here with the hydrangeas, the false dracaena, and then also the small grasses. But look, our hydrangeas are in full bloom. Aren't they beautiful? And so one thing that's gonna happen out in your yard is your plants are gonna grow, they're gonna flower, they're gonna get top heavy. And you can see this branch, it got top heavy. And we, we'd like to have it up like this so it fits more with the form of the plant, but it wants to do that because it is very top heavy with that large bloom. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna stake it. Our goal is to have this up enough to where it fits the form of the plant a lot better. It's more eye appealing. It doesn't look like there's an outlier coming out. So we want it up about here. And I think today a good stake to use will be our bamboo stake. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the stake up here and we're just gonna take a look and see what we need to do. So we want this bloom up about here. We're gonna place the stake up against or very close to, depending on your situation for your plant, near the stem you wanna stake. And so we're gonna take that stake and we're gonna put it down in the ground. We're gonna make sure that it's nice and sturdy. It's not going anywhere. See, I'm, I'm shaking it, it's not going anywhere. So then we're gonna reposition the stem because it fell down. We're gonna place it against this stake. And then we've got twine that we're gonna just tie onto here very lightly. And we're gonna tie this stem to this stake to make sure that it stays in place for the rest of the season. And I'm not gonna get it really tight because what I wanna do is make sure that the stem stays at this location, but I don't wanna girdle and strangle the plant too much in this area 
at all because I don't want to cut off the flow of nutrients and harm the plant where then it hurts the flower and the stem and the leaves. And this can also lead to different diseases and insects, as you've probably already heard me say before in previous videos. The less stress to the plant, the better. So question, Sean, does it matter where on the stem you tie it? I mean, I see leaves below or above and below kind of where you tied it. Does that matter? It does matter, and I'm glad you asked that because you want the stem at a certain location on the stake so it, it reaches your goal of what you're trying to do with the staking. And in this case, we want this stem to be at this location on this stake so that stem and that flower fits the form of the rest of the plant and it doesn't look like it's sticking out or falling down. So what I've done is I've just chosen to make sure at the closest point possible where the stem and the stake meet is to tie it off there loosely so when it goes to try and move, it's not gonna move. It's gonna, see I, it was up against that leaf. See now it's holding it and that's all there really is to staking. It just depends on the situation and how you wanna get it done. It also depends on the plant, what's available. You can see too that I staked it farther away from the root system that we know is there when we planted the plant. So when we staked it here, it doesn't hurt those roots that are trying to radiate out. We don't cause more stress to the plant. So guys, we're out here in our front yard and in a previous video, we showed you how to stake a crocosmia plant and we staked them because the flowers were drooping over top heavy and coming into our walkway. And you can see that we used twine and we used a metal stake. There it is. So guys, also, here's an example of staking Leatris. And you can see our metal stake is right here. And again, we just use some twine, you know, just use that, it's really readily available. We're still under quarantine, as you know. And so we're using what we have available to take care of our plants the best we can. And over here we have an example of a wood stake holding up and kind of helping rehab this lavender, this beautiful English lavender that we have. We transplanted this not too long ago. It was not planted in the right place and it was growing really goofy and... It was covered in vinca. Covered in vinca. So we, re we found a great new home for it. We transplanted it and this wood stake is doing a great job holding it up. Yep. And what we've done too is we haven't tied this off with this stake. We're using the stake as leverage against the actual stem of the lavender plant, so it just naturally takes this form. It was growing way over to the right side in that direction, yeah, as you can see. It was, yeah, it was not growing well at all. And that's because the vinca was pulling on it and pushing it down. And it's had a little bit of transplant shock, but you can see there's a lot of new growth and it's doing actually very well. Mm -hmm. So that, that stake is really helpful. Mm -hmm. It's just another example of how to stake a plant. And you'll see this and many other variations out there in different gardens and landscapes. So as far as using garden stakes as stakes, those are multiple examples for you and we show you how to stake a hydrangea stem and we hope that was helpful as well. But there are other uses for stakes. You're probably wondering, how do you use a stake as a tool? So one big way that we're able to use stakes as a tool in our yard is as like a poker. Um, we will often go around and poke holes in all our containers and sometimes ground beds that are really tightly compacted make space for air and water to flow. Sometimes the soil in your containers for your plants will get compacted over time, especially if you planted them either last year or even at the beginning of this spring. It just compacts over time with more water and with gravity. As Allison said, it's a good idea to use these stakes to the poke holes down into that soil of your containers to let more air and water penetrate down to reach those plant roots. Now, one last thing you can use these stakes for is any construction projects around your garden or around your house. You can use them to draw straight lines and keep things in check while building different retaining walls or fences. Hey, fence project. <laughs> um, and many other things. So keep that in mind too. They're great for that. So let us know in the comments below how you use your stakes for anything other than holding your plants up. And also let us know down below if you have any comments or questions about this video or what we did on this video. Give us that thumbs up, let us know we're doing a good job, and subscribe to our channel so you get updates on our latest videos. And that's a wrap for this week's Garden Tool Saturday. We'll be back tomorrow with our next Science Sunday. So that's been a lot of fun the last couple weeks. And if you haven't caught that yet, check out our videos and look for Science Sunday. We'll have a great experiment to run tomorrow in our garden. So stay tuned and see you tomorrow. Bye everybody. Bye bye.